Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time a fairly brief video on this little beastie here which is the uh, the Code RPR30 um, RF pre-selector. I picked it off off eBay for um, about £31 and when it arrived uh, having carefully checked it out um, I put some power on and discovered it was actually working. Um, however it did contain some quite old components, it's, it's a 1960s piece of technology so I've replaced the bits that needed replacing. Fairly simple circuit, it's a single stage RF preamp, it's got an RF pentode here, it's an EF183, a um, little bit of associated circuitry and then tuned circuits here, um, switchable on three ranges to essentially allow you to um, improve the quality of the signal going into the CR70 receiver um, and it certainly improves the, the selectivity as well as uh, the sensitivity. So uh, I'm pleased with that. Um, what there was was a couple of um, 8 microfarad electrolytics here and I'm going to pop those on the, uh, the meter in a minute and see what, uh, what they're actually like but I've replaced those um, anyway. And also I've replaced a number of resistors that were um, quite a lot higher than um, than they should be. So that's all that's all been replaced. So hopefully she's um, uh, going to be uh, good, as good as new. Everything else um, checks out all right. So I'm going to leave it. Um, the one interesting thing about this though is that um, this version uh, has the the mains power supply, as you can see, a transformer there, um, and associated smoothing capacitors and, and a diode. Um, however that's not required because the CR70 has um, came with a cable which actually supplies heater voltage and high tension and it actually suits me to um, when I switch the, the main receiver on for the um, pre-selector to come on at the same time. So um, that works fine connected to there but when I had a little bit of a look at the circuit diagram I realised that um, because of the way it's wired uh, the um, the diode in the high tension supply will stop uh, the high tension going back into the to the transformer so I'm not concerned about that but there's nothing stopping the the heater voltage from en energizing that little bit of the transformer there so I've got my meter onto the um, the primary side of the transformer when she was hooked up and being supplied by the codar and sure enough I've got pretty much 200 volts coming out of there so rather than take wires off here what I've actually done is I've removed the mains lead disconnected those two wires and if I want to return it to separate main supply that will be very straightforward to do just pop a wire through there and, uh, and connect it up but in the meantime I'm just going to power it off the uh, off the radio which I think is a, a much better idea so um, nice nice and clean example actually so I'm pleased with that and as I say it's made quite a bit of difference to the uh, the receiver and uh, now I've replaced uh, resistors and capacitors. So there we go, nice bit of kit. Okay here are the components that I removed from the uh, PR30 pre-selector and um, that's a 470 ohm resistor it was up, to, up at about 640 ohms and these here are two um, 68k and they were up um, around about 100k so they were something like 50% bigger than uh, than they were supposed to be so I've replaced those as well and there were two electrolytics in the power supply as I've mentioned I'm not using the power supply but um, uh, might as well swap them out while I'm there and these actually um, test out reasonably well on the component tester they're supposed to be 8 microfarads and don't know all that's going to show up on there that's showing up at 10.5 microfarads with an ESR of 0.62 ohms. Um, so that looks, to all intents and purposes, quite reasonable. The other one, um, just pop her on there um, and get it to test again. Is it going to do it? Here we go, yeah. So, and that's coming out again about 10 microfarads with an ESR of about half an ohm. So um, they would seem to test out okay. When I put them on to my multimeter on uh, ohms range I'm getting um, 
something like 24 mega ohms so certainly at low voltage DC they appear to be um, just open circuit which of course is what a capacitor is supposed to be but the really telling test of course is um, is to use the mega um, and if I can get the display so you can actually see it um, yeah you can see that there so these capacitors are rated at 450 volts um, and uh, I've got a 250 volt range on here so we'll we'll check what the resistance is at 250 volts with a test here and that's at 250 volts and straight away you can see um, it's about 90k so in other words uh, it's clearly leaking um, at, uh, at around 250 volts which is the kind of voltage they would have been they would be subjected to in the power supply so um, they definitely aren't okay um, they definitely pass the best um, and taking care to have turn the test off for that uh, on the mega there before I swap over and onto this one and we'll test again and yeah straight away about, about 100 about 100 K there 90 90k sorry 9k now uh, not 100k um, so about 9k which is very very different to the mega ohms that I was getting at low voltage so they clearly are uh, failing at, uh, at the kind of voltage they would work at so uh, definitely uh, wise to have, have changed them so there we go um, that's uh, been quite an easy job really and I'm very pleased with the bit of kit uh, it, it seems to work very well um, and also the uh, the mega is a very good way of of testing out capacitors that um, at their actual working voltage which of course in the va case of valve equipment is often quite high Okay, this is the pre-selector, if I can... So as you can see, there's a definite peak there. Picks it nicely out of the noise. What it mainly does, however, is um, it mainly rejects things either side. There's another uh, 5 megahertz channel not very far away from here. And uh, without the pre-selector in, you can you can certainly hear other stations, and there are some other stations on, uh, but you can't hear them with the pre-selector in. So that's good. Um, so I'm pleased with the performance, and uh, now the components are replaced, and I've made it so that the mains lead doesn't become energised. Um, uh, all good. Okay. Well, I hope um, it's been enlightening to see what happens to these old um, carbon film resistors that certainly gone up by about 50% in value so having put the correct value back into the circuit can only can only improve the performance and again capacitors that would seem to test out right um, for an ESR point of view when you actually get them at their something approximating their working voltage it's it's clear that their old electrolytics and the the uh, dielectric is indeed uh, breaking down so I hope that's that's been useful um, PR30 pre-selector, I'm very pleased with it. Um, they don't come up very often on eBay, so I'm glad I snatched that one when I saw it. And um, hopefully it's going to give me a few more um, years of pleasure listening with the, the CR70A receiver. OK, thanks very much for watching. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, click the thumbs up. If not, click the thumbs down. Either way, it'd be great if you could subscribe. And um, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching.